Yo, what's up aliens? I uh, here with another tutorial. So today I'm going to be going over how to use Ozone Elements 9 that is for free. Uh, they have a free download on Splice. I'll provide a link below in the comments where y'all can get that. Usually I don't use this method when I'm mastering my own tracks because usually I mix and produce at a mastering level. I've gone over that in several different videos. But I do use this method when I'm mastering other people's tracks that they send me like a negative 6 dB stem. And uh, I'm going to show y'all how I go about doing that right now. Uh, this is actually a friend of mine's track. Uh, they're called Dissolve. I've played several festivals with them. They're dope. And I've got their track Triplicity right now. It's gonna be on a new album of theirs. It's at about a negative 6 dB right now. It's a little bit over, but that's, that's okay because it goes over and under. The most important thing is that it's not peaking out. It gives the mastering process room to be able to actually get the volume and the clarity that you want out of your track. So I'm going to be using two different plugins to achieve this. One is Ozone 9 and then the other is my favorite plugin, Span. If you've seen my other videos, you know how much I love this. I want to say is that there's better mastering things out there like the full ozone suite is like way better than the elements one but you can still get a pretty good result from this so in elements there's basically eq a stereo imager and a limiter so first off let's play around with the limiter there's two modes here irc and irc2 it stands for intelligent release control they have some sort of algorithm that is able to adjust the release of the compressor i like to use irc2 on this one in the other versions there's higher ircs and i like to use those also on here i like to turn on the transient emphasis and turn up the amount so we'll listen to this and we'll start pulling down on the threshold. You can see right about here is when we're starting to get some gain reduction. There's a little meter right here of the gain reduction. I generally don't like to go over negative six in gain reduction and it's okay if it's less or more, but that's a general rule. So what I'm gonna do is look here inside span and I'm just gonna keep on pulling down on the threshold until this sub bass rests around this negative 30 line. And the number 30 is, you can see right here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Also, I'm going to pull down on the ceiling. So after you've mastered your tune, like sometimes when converting from a wave to an MP3 or just the conversions that they have online, there can be sometimes like weird distortion that's added. So I like to pull down on the ceiling by just negative 0.1. And so that way, at least a little bit of space for those compression things to not mess up your song and add unwanted distortion if you're just showing your track online or something like that. Next, let's go to the equalizer. Something that I like to do in the equalizer is set it to mid side mode. So basically we have a, a band that's affecting the mids and a band that's affecting the sides. And I actually like to pull up the sides and we'll listen as we do that. So that way there's just like a little bit more uh, detail in the side range on the high end only really. And then I'm also going to pull down on, I'm going to set this to a high pass filter. I'm going to up the slope and yeah, we're going to get rid of all the sub in the, in the sides. Also, looking here in Spain, right now, like when I'm looking for like a well-balanced track, the average height of the lows equals the average height of the highs. And right now the highs are a little bit lower than the lows. So that's why I'm boosting the EQ on the high end. And I'm also going to boost the EQ here on the midsection as well on the highs. So being aware of like what kind of content is in there, I just noticed that these like bells and whatnot are coming in here. Ooh. 
So actually, I might have the EQ be a little less than what I have it at. And then I actually might up this sub a tiny bit and I'm going to use the low shelf. I'm going to set it to analog so that way I can just control the cue of it a little bit easier. I really just want to affect the very low ends and then also I noticed that there's that sub bass that was jumping up. But you see how here how it's like pretty thick here in this section. I might want to have a little bit more separation. So I might pull down in this like 70, 80 hertz zone. So I'm going to do that here with the bell style EQ. And just sort of shape that. Cool, that's sounding much better. We're gonna then go into this imager here. I found the elements one a little bit deceiving because usually in the full ozone, there's like a multi-band with the uh, stereo widener, but in this, that's only one channel. Uh, but I thought it would widen the whole channel, but like when I listen to it, it's actually only widening some sort of high end because it's not widening the sub bass, which is what you don't wanna do. So they've already sort of prefixed that for you. I usually put my everything below 100 hertz into mono uh, in the multiband version, but with this one, they've somehow got it so that way I don't know what at what frequency it cuts off, but if you widen it, it, it does sound good. You'll only be able to really tell this if you have like headphones or you're listening in your studio monitors. <laughs> Okay, cool. Now, this is where you can really mess it up. I don't really use the stereo eyes, especially on a master, because you can put the sub in stereo and it's going to sound really weird on big speaker systems. I'll show you how to mess that up and how to actually observe it. Here in Span, there's this correlation meter, and anything to the right is in stereo, uh, or all the way to the right is mono, and everything to the left is out of phase. So we'll actually uh, put it in out of phase by turning on the stereo eyes turning it up all the way and the width all up all the way and you'll see you can see that it's out of phase it might sound weird too so don't do that but yeah i think overall this has helped master the sound let's see the before and after here's the before and the after Pretty good, I'd say. Now, before I go, I want to mention another use that I think is going to be super awesome for a lot of y'all is to use the ozone elements on groups. I've talked about my magic template series uh, in the past, and I, I've talked about my the templates that I use in Ableton, um, and I actually have... So before I've talked about my templates, it, so before I've talked about my magic templates, so I've mentioned my magic able, I've mentioned my magic Ableton templates in other videos, but in them I was always using Pro L or I was using just built-in stock Ableton effects. But now I think that this is going to get a better result for people that don't want to buy the Pro L or can't buy it right now. I was messing around with some settings on this and I tested a few, uh, mastering a few tracks this way, mixing a few tracks this way and it actually worked really well. So I have um, limiters on almost all of my groups and y'all could actually just throw the Ozone 9 element as a limiter on the groups. So let me show you what I do. So I actually 
turn off the equalizer, turn off the imager, turn on the maximizer, put the threshold all the way up to zero, turn it on IRC2 and just leave it at that. I noticed the IRC2 does use a little bit more CPU, but it does sound a little bit better. So I'd say it's a worthwhile trade-off. And it uses about similar CPU as a, a FabFilter Pro L would use. So I would put this here on my uh, chords, basses, kicks and drums, uh, top drums, and pre-master groups. Basically anywhere where I would normally have like a Pro L, I'd replace it with the Ozone Element 9. I'll provide a link below of where y'all can get my Ableton templates and also include the video on like how to use the Ableton templates and how to get the these really loud mixes they're super clear and punchy yeah you're i think you're going to be good to go i'm super stoked that isotope is offering this free mastering plugin because honestly it's my second favorite limiter besides the fab filter pro l it's very good as well it's pretty transparent i love it all right aliens hope you enjoyed this if you did please give it a like and if you haven't already subscribe all right peace